applications and so on so forth using multiple devices. So available for computing power at an affordable price would change the world because that is an asset. And also the availability of this power will change the world at rapid speed. Look at here, it took 150 years to provide affordable electric power in India. Even today, so we are talking about uh, rural electrification and so on and so forth. So it was probably invented 1831. But the critical thing is speed is the essence. I don't think so we have another 150 years to wait to have this commercially viable computing power in India. When I say again computing power you have seen in the past a few slides I have shown that hardware or network or storage or operating system there are middleware machines or something different uh, infrastructure is there that is generating the computing power that computing power commercially needs to be available then only I think the changes will really emerge very fast so in the real time scenario so we require many technology engines so which I have shown schematically what a technology engine means having the servers or uh, hardware operating system storage middleware machines at all so imagine a situation there are so many technology engines like that so I call it as a data center to generate the huge computing power today there are many data centers which probably have uh, lakhs and lakhs of square feet size and many many big big machines and the hardware. So those are called data centers. So the challenge is to get the reliable computing power at an affordable price. Today establishing data centers by organizations or governments is very expensive and common people it is ruled out. So that's where we really need to, need to look at how these data centers are available at an affordable price to the people or micro or small and um, uh, medium enterprises. Look at some interesting statistics here. Government and industry have established large data centers. I call it as the many technology engines. So micro and small enterprises do not have the required money to build their own data centers. Look at the carbon emissions from these data centers which already exist um, will quadruple by 2020. There are nearly 44 million servers are there consuming 0.5% of the total electricity available in the world. Data centers consume 25% of the corporate budgets. Electricity consumption, you look at here, today in the world, well, compare, uh, covering all the data centers, 14 power, point, power plants equivalent energy is consumed. That means I think it is 1,000 megawatt power is generated by each power plant. So 14,000 megawatt power is consumed by the data centers in the world today. Imagine how much carbon emissions and then impact will be there on the grid. The other important thing, the average utilization of the hardware, that's where I talked about the technology engines is only 5 to 15 percent of the capacity because that technology engine or the engines are built for maximum capacity. In a business, if you really look at a typical scenario, the demand is not constant every day, every month. There are peak and there are down, but these uh, technology engines and hardware is designed for peaks. That's where the utilization on the average in a year is 5 to 15 percent, which is another serious concern. So I think um, so small and mid-sized enterprises, uh, they don't have money, but still they want the technology to support uh, the business. There are some applications which are not in regular use. You might use the yearly once or twice. For that, there is no point in procuring them. and. Uh, in some cases, there is an urgency in setting up the operations in our business that if you go to the IT department, they might say we'll take 12 months, then you don't have time. So is there any way you rent those applications from somebody within a week's time or a month's time, can you make it up and running so that you can avoid some of the legal issues or regulatory issues and so on and so forth. So considering all these things, what is important here is the smart data centers have to be established which consumes less energy there will be low carbon emissions and uh, the capacity utilization of these data centers which I talk about technology engines or hardware needs to be effective and should be elastic 
That means when the demand is high, the capacity should be expanded. When the demand is low, the capacity needs to be shrinked so that the utilization can be effective and also the consumption of the capacity is also effective. And next, okay, is it possible? So when I talk about the data centers which are really uh, today very thick data centers, can you make them smart data centers? Fortunately, the technology has come out now. That's where the cloud computing, I'm not getting into details here. There is a virtualization technology, there is a multi-tenant applications, and access through internet, uh, and uh, pay as you go, different attributes are there. Uh, today the session is not really on the cloud computing, so I'm just leaving a thread here. There is a possibility with the technology innovation called cloud computing to build the smart data centers. Um, uh, that's where I would like to share in this slide. Okay, there is again a choice here. The data centers as an organization or a government or a, a non-profit organization. So whether you want to own or whether you want to rent. So it's like a car or a taxi. So yes, I can rent it and I can go to my office or I can go to the place where I want. Every day I can rent it or I can own my own car. So that is also a possibility. So here there are two possibilities. Owning smart data centers, I call it as a private cloud computing. And renting smart data centers, I call it as a public cloud computing. When to go for what is a big subject which we could talk probably in my next topic. But I would like to probably share here there are two options. So in public cloud, which is probably available, you're renting the smart data centers. The applications, whether it is ERP or supply chain or desktop applications or office productivity applications, are all are available on rental basis. You can pay for usage. And uh, if you want to develop applications uh, using uh, Java platforms or any other IDs, then you don't need to really procure licenses and all. You can rent them, you can develop, and then just use it as you go. That is called a pass. And if you want infrastructure, again, operating system, network, storage, and hardware, there is no need to procure yourself desktops or servers. As a company, as an individual, you can also rent that. So metering for chargeback is the key feature for the renting, like we do for our utility services like power and water. That's where I think the public cloud computing is playing a very vital role. A similar phenomena is applied within uh, organizations or governments, which is called a private cloud. There, I think the customers are not external, but internal business units. So I think this is the context setting I thought uh, the cloud computing perspective I would like to set. Now let us, uh, getting into, are there any business benefits or any other benefits to the citizens or community because of the cloud computing? Uh, let me quickly run through uh, some of the examples here. I'm in slide number 16. I have taken this from World Economic Forum. So computing power, now I talk about all these data centers at the end of the day generate the computing power. Generate the, uh, enables the economy growth at rapid velocity. So can I divide this IT divide, um, can I minimize the IT divide between emerging and developed economies? If you look at the developed economies like United States of America, I think their IT spend per year is $80 billion, and probably they have 1,500 plus data centers are there. I don't think so the same thing happens in India or uh, Sri Lanka or Pakistan or in African nations or whatever. But because of that reason, these nations should not get the probably punished uh, not having access to that IT or technology power. That's where the public cloud plays a very vital role, where these countries and organizations can uh, rent the required power and use for their requirement. Then uh, this is where I think again the emerging economies can really demonstrate the innovation, prove the innovation by access to the technology which is now available at an affordable price on rental basis and then jobs and uh, businesses can be set up in the economy. The next one you look at here, um, it also basically enables industry growth at rapid velocity. Minimize IT divide, again I talked about small enterprises don't have the money or the resources to have that computing power or technology or the data centers compared to the large enterprises, that divide can be reduced because of the cloud computing. And uh, we can see the future 
of whatever business through simulation. Usually the simulations need lot of computing power so we can visualize and see so how the future business looks like with permutations and combinations. So that can be really uh, easily achievable through uh, cloud computing, especially using the public clouds when you can rent that computing power that. And it also improves the collaboration between suppliers and customers because the collaboration tools can be available for cloud where your suppliers and partners and yourself can access and then you can really communicate uh, especially there. Then healthcare, again uh, if you really look at in healthcare in the research where a lot of data get captured during the clinical trials and all, now the computing power is available where uh, more and more innovation, data analysis can be done and good medicines can be released to the market because the highest computing power is available where data can be used for better decisions. In education again, I think interactive and collaborative learning all over the world, people can connect and the learning content can be probably available at a very affordable price even to the rural villages the uh, content could be available which could be posted on cloud providers could be Amazon or Rackspace or something. Even people in the villages can afford uh, to uh, get the content at uh, very low cost. So 